caved on Obamacare repeal gets exactly what he deserves. Danny Tarkanian, the son of a legendary Nevada college basketball coach who has run for office several times, announced Tuesday morning that he will challenge GOP Senator Dean Heller in Nevada's Republican primary next year. The challenger made the announcement on Fox and Friends and he went after Heller for being a never-Trumper. He also believes that the way Heller behaves gave Nevada to Clinton during the 2016 election. Advertisement So many people have contacted me in the past few months, saying you got to run against Dean Heller, Tarkanian said. They understand, like I do, that we're never going to make America great again unless we have senators in office supporting President Trump. Dean Heller wasn't just one of the first never-Trumpers in the state of Nevada, he was one of the most influential. He actually helped Hillary Clinton win the state of Nevada. It is nice to see someone to challenge an establishment GOP senator like Dean Heller. Tarkanian may not be the best challenger because he has failed to win in previous office runs. It's actually worrisome that these are the only people standing up to people like Heller. Dean Heller is a traitor. He is a Democrat in a Republican suit. Heller was one of six turncoats on the repeal of Obamacare. There has been no real vote to repeal Obamacare. But on the closest thing the GOP has advanced this year, Dean Heller was a traitor. In 2015, a repeal bill, one that repealed as much of Obamacare as possible without 60 votes, was passed by a majority of the Senate. Among the people who voted for that bill were Dean Heller, John McCain, Shelley Moore Capito, Lisa Murkowski, Lamar Alexander, and Rob Portman. This bill was supposed to be vetoed by Obama, and he vetoed it. With a skinny repeal vote, the GOP has managed to muddy the waters on who actually opposed Obamacare repeal. Heller is avowed to stopping Obamacare from being repealed. Advertisement, what do you think? Sean Hannity demands Mitch McConnell retire for what he just did to Trump. Sean Hannity is fed up with the do-nothing GOP who seem hell-bent on blocking, not passing, Trump's agenda. And he is kicking ass and taking names. Advertisement Specifically, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Early today Sean Hannity demanded the Republican senator retire for what he did to Trump. You are weak spineless leader who does not keep his word and you need to retire, sick, Hannity tweeted. It wasn't so bad that Mitch flopped on the Obamacare repeal, it is what he said about Trump that sealed his fate with Sean. Advertisement Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell went after President Donald Trump because of his alleged lack of understanding about the way Congress works. He said that the president has very large expectations of the legislative process. Speaking to a Florence Rotary Club in his home state of Kentucky, McConnell said, Our new president, of course, has not been in this line of work before. I think he had excessive expectations about how quickly things happen in the democratic process. Part of the reason I think that the storyline is that we haven't done much is that, in part, the president and others have set these early timelines about things need to be done by a certain point, he said. Mitch McConnell also emphasized that the public should just wait the whole two years of this Congress before giving judgment. Well, you're judged based on what you do day one at any job, this job should not be any different. He stressed that the misperception that Congress is underperforming is because of too many artificial deadlines unrelated to the reality of the complexity of legislature which may not have been understood. McConnell also whined about Trump using Twitter. I've been and I will be again today, not a fan of tweeting and I've said that to him privately, he said. I think it would be helpful if the president would be a little more on meth. Trump sends feds into Michigan for ice raid, discover America's worst nightmare hiding in plain sight. Former President Barack Obama allowed Muslim refugees to enter our country. Thanks to his policies. Michigan has become a home for Islamic extremists. Among these refugees, there are a lot of criminals who are hiding in under the guise of a humanitarian effort. Although Americans were demanding tougher control on the border, Obama didn't want to hear any of it. However, thank God Trump became president.
he immediately enforced immigration laws in order to protect our country and its people. Freedom Daily reports, just recently, federal agents went into Muslim-infested Michigan to conduct a raid, and what they found was disgusting. Of course, the left is losing their mind over the fact that our laws are being enforced, but it is about time. Over the last several of years, illegals have been entering the country and committing horrific crimes ranging from murder to sexual assaults. A few weeks ago, ICE conducted an 11-day raid in New York and caught a lot of bad people for sex crimes. Now, another raid was conducted, but this time it was in Michigan. During a four-day raid, ICE discovered that almost 80 perfect of the illegal immigrants committed crimes. This is horrible. Freedom Daily reports, of the criminal convictions, they ranged from DUI, domestic battery, contempt of court, possession of open intoxicants, criminal sexual conduct, child abuse, fourth degree, child neglect, destruction of property, domestic violence, larceny, false identity to law enforcement, and attempted identity theft among other offenses. The 33 arrestees are from four countries, Mexico, Liberia, Guatemala and El Salvador. Some of the illegals who were arrested will be prosecuted for re-entry after deportation. This felony is punishable up to 20 years jail time. However, the illegals that won't be prosecuted will be removed from the country. Operations like these demonstrate that ICE is focused on the arrest of dangerous criminal illegals. The agency will continue to protect our nation and uphold public safety. Something like this would have never happened under Obama's administration. Tour country was neglected for too long thanks to the democratic policies. However, because of our new President Trump and ICE, our country is more protected and secure than it was before. Maxine Waters Nightmare Confirmed she just realized her worst fears. Rep. Hopeful Omar Navarro has had enough of the liberals in California ruining the state and the nation. He's only 28 years old, but that isn't stopping him from challenging Maxine Waters in the 2018 election for the 43rd Congressional District. When I realized Maxine Waters was my representative, I said, wow, this person is representing me. How are people electing this person year after year? Navarro said. I started doing research and looking into her background and I did not see one candidate running a legitimate campaign against her in 27 years. Advertisement During an interview, Navarro made it very clear that liberal politicians are destroying their own counties and states for a quick buck. He isn't ready to let the country say die yet. Maxine Waters is an example of someone who has ruined their district. Navarro was born in Inglewood, California and spent a significant portion of his life in Hawthorne and Torrance. He said that played a significant role in his decision to run in the 43rd district against Waters because he knows the region and its people. He quit from operating as the Torrance Traffic Commission two weeks ago. This isn't his first run. He ran against the awful globalist in 2016. He had only raised about $3,000 for his initial run against Waters, compared to the $650,000 she spent against him. But I still got 25% of the vote, which was quite humbling to even receive that type of vote with the amount of money I spent. He added, I learned a lot from that election, and said, it was an honor for me to be on the ballot with, Donald. Trump too. So far this year, he has outraised Waters in individual contributions by $5,000. This is a man on a mission against a political machine that favors the corrupt. Navarro attended El Camino College in Torrance with the drive to pursue business administration. He later on transferred to ITT Tech and got his degree in criminal justice. Then he went on to USC and studied information security. He has also worked for Samsung and Sony. He said one of his best jobs was being paid to play video games, which he did while working for the government. Last week, Navarro held a fundraiser at the Trump National Golf Club in Rancho Palos Verdes. Maxine Waters if you're listening, I'm coming for you. Omar Navarro is campaigning on a bevy of issues. They include job creation, solving the homeless problem, preserving the Second Amendment incentivizing legal immigration, 
business growth, job creation, and better care for the veterans. What are we doing for our homeless veterans? Navarro asked. I don't like seeing people that protected our freedoms ending up in the streets, Navarro said. On immigration, he added, I'm a big supporter of people coming here through the right process. My mom came from the northern part of Mexico and my father came from Havana, Cuba. But they both did it right. They didn't break any laws. They respected the law. If Trump had a 2% chance, what do you give Navarro? Advertisement, share this story. Laura Ingraham takes off kid gloves, knocks at NYC a liberal on live TV. Laura Ingraham had a head-to-head -head battle with Mark Green in a Monday night debate. The debate was centered on President Donald Trump's first 200 days. Trump has gotten more done in his first 200 days than anyone in recent memory. Advertisement, great adjectives, we've got a list of all your adjectives, Ingraham said, mocking Green, a New York City public advocate. Trump, is Hitler, Mussolini. She won hard after Green because he knows exactly how well that Trump has done. He is just another liberal who wants to deface the Trump White House to stop him from doing his job. The intellectuals on the coast, they know better than millions of people in the electoral states that ended up mattering in the end, she continued. Do they have any right to be upset with what's happened to this country? Yeah, forget all of that red Mr. Green. Just worry about what the people in LA and NYC say. They are the most important people in the world apparently, well, also the people across the globe that hate us. Pew Research Center did a survey. They asked the people around the world, would you trust Trump or Obama who's out of office, Green said, trying to take back the argument. 64% trusted Obama. We are laughing stock. Ingraham had a good question for Green. She wanted to know if the Democrats have a good plan for 2018. They clearly do not. So, we've established in your view Trump's the worst. Mark, pipe down for a minute, Ingraham said, clearly annoyed, OK, what next for you? What next for you and the Democrat Party, what do you have to offer those middle class voters? What do you think about this? Do you want to see the video? Air Force General accurately predicts how long it would take to wipe North Korea off map. Retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General Tom McInerney made an announcement on Fox News on Monday. He said that if the North Korean regime decided to launch a nuclear attack on the U.S. or South Korea, the despotic regime would only about 15 minutes to enjoy it because then the country would no longer exist. If he gets our full nuclear retaliatory capability, Within minutes after one round going into Seoul, there will be nothing left, McInerney told Fox's Liz Kleman on Countdown to the Closing Bell. Advertisement, if you go to Airborne Alert, we used to call it Chrome Dome, with nuclear weapons, and then we start building up our other forces, etc., he will not last 15 minutes, McInerney said. The U.S. Air Force has control of all ICBMs in the U.S. arsenal. They are all prepped and ready to go at all times. As are the nuclear bombers. There are bombers that run a rotation in Guam, but the regular duty station for the nuclear bombers is Minute, ND and Barksdale, LA. The Washington Post announced on Tuesday that U.S. intelligence reports on the progress of North Korea's nuclear program had believed that the regime is now miniaturizing the nuclear bombs. They believe that the nation now has around 60 nuclear devices. McInerney gave his solution to the impending danger from North Korea. I would form a political area treaty organization, similar to NATO, he told Glimmon. I would have South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Philippines, Thailand, and other countries out there form a bulwark, not only against North Korean expansion but at Chinese expansion. I would start moving in more THAAD missiles. I would put our nuclear retaliatory capability on ground alert. I would start increasing our naval and air forces in the region. Advertisement, what do you think of this? 